between so like a two to one. Okay. I think we should do a, uh, this is a good place to close. Sirs and madams, wherever you are, this is a recap of composing a ballad in C full tonality, part seven. We set out to do a consistency check in our third variation, make sure the backbone and the melody notes and the cadence all agree. And we did that. Big check mark. And then we wanted to observe passing note patterns. And we most definitely did that. We discovered some very interesting things along the way. And we elected to use a, a spreadsheet as a way to capture these patterns. And we said, uh, here, these are all the notes that we used in the third variation, all the way from C4 to uh, C5, E5. And every phrase, a passing note either went between a cadence or it stayed within a cadence. And then as we notated where we were passing, for example, here we were going between a B and an E flat, which are in the cadence. Well, actually it's changing the cadence between A3-3 three, three and A flat-3-3. Three, three. Here's a case where we're going between A flat and, and the D octave and staying within the cadence. And, and the, this is where we actually had notes in the melody as currently composed, and then we identified candidate notes that could be used instead. And the reason we wanted to identify candidate notes that could be used instead was that in variation three, we want a different feel, a sensation, impression, which is why we picked different cadences in the first place. And these underscores highlight where other passing notes could be used. Basically, we just took the melody from the first variation, copied it as is, only changed the melody notes, the backbone, again back here, the backbone where we had to, and then we kind of threw the passing notes in the middle, helter-skelter, trying to listen for what sounded good where we had an option, but we soon realized that there, because of the nature of the cadences in variation three, there are a lot more spread between certain backbone notes and a lot more candidates for fill notes. And we did not have a design principle, so to speak, for which ones to pick. Um, so where are we going next? We're going to want to Our, our game plan was, and is, to, we did not even get here today, but we want to ad adjust the backbone and melody notes to their new cadences, and we want to also look at passing note options and patterns. So we're very much going to apply what we're learning from this uh, spreadsheet. Then ultimately we wanted to go back to variation one, but that's down the road. We won't even talk about it just yet. Another interesting thing is over here, we, for want of a better word, identified a, a signature pattern in our melody. It came from, it came from well, we'll just show where it is. 
It came from our listening. And we're discovering that what it is over here, it's, it's a dyad. Come on, find it, find it, find it. There it is. Right here. And, and we like... Uh, one of the other things, we, this, it turned out this is not a... This is a, in the original variation, this note is a passing note. But when we change cadences and copy the melody note as is... Surprise, surprise, our new cadence, that, that passing note from the first variation fits in the cadence of the third variation. And so we were taken aback in noting, and that, and that we, we put that over here, we said, do we want to have consistency in passing note patterns and, and, and change this note right here so that it, it's out of the cadence and gives us a different flavor you know for example it could go it could go to an E flat which is not in there instead of So, and we, we punted, we said, keep going, keep going, keep going. And we found other places where we could change these into passing notes. The funny thing that happened along the way was we did find one case where in the original variation, uh, they had a passing note here in the fourth bar, but in in our new cadence, there's no option. You go from E flat, it has to get to the C, and it has to go through the D because it, D flat's not allowed. It's not in any of these scales. So that's why we said over here, uh, do we want to have consistency in passing note patterns where it's an option? Uh, and we actually wanted to pose that as a question. So, that's what we got. And it's pretty cool. Among other things, we've got this format for annotating and going back and what we want to do for example we, we didn't we noticed something consistent uh, what did we notice consistent we want to where the same note goes to another note and we have the same passing note in between that gives us per, the, uh, the beginning of a design principle for how to pick these and we said it's really important because we have a whole bunch of other scales we want to compose in that all have their own sets of tool tonality and and have their options for passing notes and if we can come up with using the diatonic scale and the ballad where we already listen and like certain patterns in the traditional treatment and now we've moved the chords to extended chords and full tonality chords and can we extrapolate passing note selection approaches from the part that sounds good and put them in the new part and have it sound good because our goal is stuff that sounds cool. Yes, we're being mechanical. Yes, we're using spreadsheets and musical scores and whatnot, but the ultimate goal is does it sound cool? Engaging, interesting, does it communicate sensations and communication beyond words? Thank you, sirs and madams, wherever you are, as always, for your attention and patience, and as always, keep on streaming. <laughs>